Hello, it's Mr. Wyman. This is a text or story that I wrote several years ago. It's called Teamwork Changes Everything. One day last November, winter was coming and Squirrel was busy gathering and burying nuts. She was hurrying because due to a severe storm that had prematurely covered the ground with snow, she was behind on meeting her quota. Rabbit saw how frantically Squirrel was working and since she was ready for winter, decided to help. At first, Squirrel did not want to be bothered. She had too much work to do and not enough time to do it. Every minute counted, and she did not want to waste even one to train Rabbit to help. Rabbit was politely persistent, though, and thought, if Squirrel let me help her, we could work as a team. Rabbit knew that teamwork not only makes jobs go faster, but causes the people doing the work to feel better for the company. It became apparent that Rabbit was not going to let Squirrel worry alone. Finally, Squirrel stopped gathering nuts and trained her friend in the art of collection. Rabbit, who was not used to gathering nuts, struggled a little at first, but eventually got the hang of it. After she had practiced for quite a while, an idea occurred to her. You know, Rabbit addressed Squirrel, I was thinking, we are picking up nuts and carrying them one by one to spots for burying. What if I carry a bunch of nuts because my paws are bigger while you collect and dig? This idea put in the form of a question made Squirrel think. By only carrying nuts, Rabbit would not be helping in gathering or burying. How could this benefit the operation? Rabbit explained, we are doing a lot of hopping around instead of gathering and burying. If we worked together as a team to gather all of the nuts we could from one area before going to the place that you would like to bury them, we might save time. As Rabbit spoke, the clouds parted and the sun sent rays of light down like beams from flashlights illuminating the area where the two friends had been working. Rabbit's gray and brown fur seemed to shine in the new sunlight and Squirrel felt a sense of warmth that she had lacked before Rabbit began to help. Using Rabbit's new plan, the two set out together Oh, set out to gather and bury as many nuts as they had minutes of sunlight left. It took a couple of minutes for the new strategy to work well. After Squirrel and Rabbit got used to it, though, they were gathering many more nuts than before and burying them faster than ever. At this rate, Squirrel would be done her task of preparing for winter in no time. Hopping about, Rabbit noticed someone or something following her. Mm. Wherever she went, this dark figure jumped and landed as she did. Squirrel noticed Rabbit's worried face and asked what was the matter. The question startled Rabbit. She had been so distracted by this interesting development that, she, that her attention hadn't been on her task. When Rabbit explained what was distracting her, Squirrel chuckled. That's your shadow, silly. What do you mean, my shadow? Rabbit inquired. Realizing that her furry friend did not know what a shadow was, Squirrel wondered if she should play a joke on Rabbit and make up a story about the dark figure that was following her around. Should Squirrel trick Rabbit? What do you think? So what do you think? Should Squirrel trick Rabbit? Make a prediction. Do you think he did? Rabbit had been so thoughtful and kind that Squirrel could not bring herself to trick her helpful friend. 
she decided instead to teach Rabbit about how shadows work and why every solid object has one. Rabbit was fascinated. It wasn't long before the two teammates finished their task and with enough daylight left to fool around making different shadows. Look, called Rabbit from the side of a big white rock. If you stand just right, it looks like a couple of human hands. Oh, I see them. There is the fingers and that is the thumb. Squirrel pointed with excitement. And there is the other thumb. Ha ha. The animals laughed and made more human hand shapes with their bodies until the sun set behind, set behind the mountains. On the way home, Squirrel confessed that she had thought about tricking Rabbit with a false story about shadows. Rabbit thought that it might have been fun to think that shadows were something other than just the darkness where light does not shine. So while they walked, the two made up several stories about where shadows come from and pretended that they were something more than blocked light. What stories do you think the two friends came up with? So here's a story introducing the idea of animals making up their own pourquois. My Shadow by Robert Louis, Steve Louis Stevenson. I have a little shadow that goes in and out with me. And what can be the use of him is more than I can see. He is very, very like me from the heels up to the head. And I see him jump before me when I jump into my bed. The funniest thing about him is the way he likes to grow, not at all like proper children, which is always very slow, for he sometimes shoots up taller like an India rubber ball, and he sometimes gets so little that there's none of him at all. He hasn't got a notion of how children ought to play, and can only make a fool of me in every sort of way. He stays so close beside me. He's a coward, you can see. I think shame to stick a nursey as that shadow sticks to me. One morning, very early, before the sun was up, I rose and found the shining dew on every buttercup. But my lazy little shadow, like an errant sleepy head, had stayed at home behind me and was fast asleep in bed.